be unloaded or what the story is, and they can now retaliate on you wrongfully when you just picked up this thing. Right. So definitely do not touch it at all. And the same principle applies if you, if you would find a knife or any other type, sure. like a razor or something. Like definitely that. don't touch it. You don't know if it's been used in any criminal act, and it's just something that you don't want to touch. Okay. Now, if we were if we were going to work on some uh, basic self-defense techniques against unarmed tactics, what what what? Give us an idea. What's the first step we go through? Well, first of all, you have to, with intense martial arts training, mm -hmm. is combine your power, speed, and form with the adrenaline that you have. Hopefully it's not too much fright, but uh, there's that adrenaline of nervousness when you see something like a firearm pointed at you. Right. But what you have to do is use above and beyond everything else is common sense. And to understand that a firearm is shooting a projectile. And someone who is putting a firearm to you is now threatening your life. And I'm just going to touch very basically on your life in danger. Uh, in New York State, in most states, there's uh, a law that allows a reasonable person who reasonably believes that his life or a life of a third, a third party is in danger for them to use deadly physical force. Now, I stress that very much because you cannot use deadly physical force unless you reasonably believe being a reasonable person that your life, and the reason why I stress this is because I know you have a vast variety of an audience and I want everyone to understand that using any technique which can maim or hurt or potentially kill someone would have to be justified even emotionally for yourself, civilly, and for any means of the law. Okay, so let's say we're in a self-defense situation. Uh, I know you have, uh, you brought a couple guns in for us to show a couple things, but let's say if I had a gun, right, I had it pointed at you, let's say you disarmed me, and to, to, what do you do then, do you detain me, uh, do you try to kick the weapon away? What's Excellent question, but the answer is very varied, uh, no one can tell you exactly the circumstances involved, depending on if that person now used that firearm previously and just killed three people around you, and right. now you came up on them. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me just explain the firearm in hand. Okay. Uh, it's, I get the, uh, the revolver, the small one there, okay? okay? This one here is a revolver, and I'd like to explain this. One second, this. let right. me just cut you off for one second. Give us an idea of how a person holds a gun, first of all. Okay, well, for the sake of your audience and uh, ex expecting them to be uneducated in the firearm sense, you never want to hold it this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is definitely wrong. If possible, if at any time you are going to hand the firearm to someone else or even look at it, the, the reason why this piece is here is this is a release, a cylinder release. This here is the cylinder and this is the cylinder release. On this particular firearm, you pull back. Right. On other types, you would push forward or do something else. So on this one, you would pull back, check to see that it's unloaded, mm. and to properly hand it to someone, you would do so this way. Absolutely. If you wanted to carry it, you can carry it this way so that people would see that it's definitely empty and it's unloaded and that it is as safe as it could possibly be at this point. Mm. If you hand someone a gun, this way is definitely wrong. Mm. Even this way is incorrect. As a, as a courtesy feature, you want to open it up and just show it and hand it to them this way. Absolutely. All right, but again, I repeat, especially for the youth or for the adult who is not familiar with firearms, definitely don't even touch this. Don't feel embarrassed or intimidated. Right. Don't even handle this if you're not familiar with it. Absolutely. Okay, Pete, let's just go over, uh, let's take uh, a, a basic gun uh, technique first, as far as disarming goes. Let's say that I had the gun. Okay. All right, now. Um, all right, just point it at me. Okay. okay. Now, for the sake of the viewing audience, what we're going to do is just face a little bit on an angle right. so that this way they could see. Okay. But obviously, in a real-life situation, we, we would be, be pointed this way. Okay. Before I go to the techniques that you would do, let's just touch base on what a typical martial arts instructor who, let's say, was born and raised in the traditional aspect of teaching the martial art. They would do something in a, um, a type of uh, either karate or jiu-jitsu technique would be something similar to a block, bang it, mm -hmm. arm breaking technique. Right. Fine for a jiu-jitsu or a typical martial arts class, right. but start pulling that trigger. If my girlfriend was behind me, she'd be had. Or a lawyer's grandmother a block away would be had. That's so that firearm now is still able to be used. Right. You want to always, if possible, have control of that weapon. Right. Now, let me give you an example of the weapon. If you hold that in your hand, 
turn your wrist as far this way as possible, okay, without moving your arm. Now turn your wrist this way. You can see that in a self-defense technique, you do not want to go inside the body because he can easily turn the wrist pointing at you and still move that trigger finger. Okay, now here. You don't want to do any technique where you would come and possibly hit the arm and send it away so you can't now grab it. You don't want to do anything where you're inside the body. All these techniques look good in a martial arts class, but a traditional instructor would only deal with the hand itself and the, uh, the actual technique involving breaking the wrist or arm and hand strikes. Now let me explain the pistol itself. This here is called a revolver because this cylinder rotates. This is the hammer. The reason why I stress this, because you have to be familiar, in order to defend yourself properly, you have to be familiar with the modern firearms used today. Absolutely. Okay, now obviously this is the trigger. If you notice, while you're pulling the trigger, this cylinder turns, it rotates. That's why it's called a revolver, because it rotates. When this hammer is sent all the way home like this, what you have to do is, even with just two fingers, is stop that cylinder, turn, pull the trigger. That cylinder is not turning. What you have to do for that first shot is to stop that cylinder from rotating. So if you're here like this and someone has a firearm on you, yeah, uh, you don't want to go, oh God, please don't hurt me, I'll give you what you want. That is showing them too much how much you're vulnerable, how much you are afraid of what they're doing. What you want to do is something like hold up your hands and say, tell me what you want. Okay, now you have this. You are holding the cylinder right at them. If you choose, you could get the bad guy. In the meantime, you have here, in a good jujitsu technique, you could break the wrist, attack, fingers in the eyes, come in throw, but now you still have, you still have this pistol in your hand to do whatever you have to do, including remove it from him, and now use it to defend yourself further. What really is, is what you have to worry about is, like I said, the two sides in the front. Now, for the sake of safety in this beautiful dojo area, <clears throat> we're going to use an unrealistic in, in blade area, but here. Now, if a knife is being held on you, again, we're turning for the sake of the camera, you want to say the same. You want to say the same technique, the same action. Thank you. You want to use this. You want to be able to have control of that weapon and always not have that weapon in the opponent's hand. You have to also take into consideration he might be one bad guy against five against you. You want to be able to utilize the knife and the technique to your advantage and to their disadvantage. Right. Okay, now, Pete, is there organizations uh, in the Long Island area where a young person or a young adult or an adult can go to to like take a firearms course or self-defense? Toki, you and I could start one. <laughs> <laughs> but is it um, like the National Rifle Association or is there, is there any organizations that... Yes, the National Rifle Association is an excellent organization, mm -hmm. but they are not involved in the self-defense aspect of it. They will teach you, I'm even an NRA instructor myself, mm -hmm. I'm a hunter safety conservation instructor. We teach the safety of the firearms. But what you have to do is combine the safety of the firearms with martial arts techniques like you and I both know. Now, you know, uh, in, in the training uh, at the courses, they don't get in, in, into any type of self-defense. But, you know, one thing that for sure that we want to make sure that our viewers understand, especially our young people, anytime Pete demonstrates a technique, you've got to remember it takes a lot of years of training for him to be skilled enough to be able to perform these type of techniques. And one thing you don't want to do is do anything with a weapon or against a weapon if you don't have to. The main thing you want to do, as Pete said, if you find a weapon, 911. Call the proper people. Find the proper adult, somebody that's knowledgeable, and they can take care of it. Pete, I want to thank you a lot for being on the show, and I know you're going to be back. All right, thanks for saying. My name is Toki Hill. I'm with Pete Trainer. We're today's martial arts, and we'll see you next week.